Hello everybody and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Yin and Young. I'm Chibi New. I'm Envy Jitters. And I'm Two Cosplay. And I'm Foxy. Wow, Sorry. you're just trying to cut me out. <laughs> you, know? you, you haven't Oops. been here all the time, speaking of people who haven't always been here, but now we've got a full crew. Yay! Great. Woo! It's fantastic. It's good. It feels like old times. And by old times, I mean back when everything sucked. No, things didn't oh. suck. Maybe things oh, suck oh, now. Yeah. I don't know. I've been going Rocking. through some stuff. Let's not let's not go into it. Uh, Princess Jellyfish. Yay! Speaking of people going through some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, yeah, it's like can I just say like we we said that this was gonna be a romance month, and to some degree I think out the gate yes we did have some romance month, but it feels a little less like we've been doing romance stuff and more like uh, close platonic friendship stuff. So I'm almost feeling like, should we change the name of this? But then at the same time, we're halfway through the <laughs> damn month, so. I mean, I will say that at least a few of these lean more toward the shoujo and jose side of romance. Yeah. Uh, so those tend to be more of a slow burn than, I think, stuff that we're used to watching. Yeah, a little also, bit. This this does eventually get to romance territory. Yeah. Sure, course, but it's very coming of age focused for both Tsukimi and Kuronosuke for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I did get the uh, sense of that, but speaking of, who's seen this before? Obviously me and Chibi. Mm. So, uh, no, I have read it. I have not watched it. I'm the same. I read some of the manga, but I never watched the anime. I mean, I've at least read a little bit of the manga, but never watched the anime. So I'm at least, you know, still in the beginnings of the thing. I've only read a few volumes, so. Oh, boy. Am I the only one who's, like, read the series through to completion? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read oh, the whole one. Boy. <laughs> you're you're going to be like yeah. me whenever I read all of Game of Thrones before watching it, and then my family was watching it, and I was trying so hard not to spoil things. <laughs> <laughs> it goes some places. Oh, okay. Oh, fun. Gab, how about you? I've uh, apparently watched four episodes of this before, mm -hmm. which I uh, do remember watching it like long time ago, but I didn't remember anything that happened. So this is like new start for me, pretty much. Cool. Envy, any experience? Nope. Nope? Okay, me neither. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'll just say it now. I ended up watching the whole thing. Oh, so, wow. Well, yeah. Wow, quick. I figured you were gonna like this. Yeah. Envy, did you do it, our Time Lord? No, I <laughs> oh. watched the minimal. Oh my god, I beat Envy for once. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I feel powerful. <laughs> I don't know why. That or I'm just lame. It's probably the second one. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of people who are lame and but and are acutely aware of it, uh, let's talk about the show. So this show follows. You guys uh, expressed a word to me before that I did not was not familiar with called a neat. Yeah. Yep. So someone explain that a little bit better than I can. It's basically a term for someone who doesn't really like have employment or is in training or has like any like way that they go outside of their house and like to do things they mostly like keep to themselves and generally they're also sort of synonymous with otakus but not all the time so me right after college <laughs> probably for a good couple months i got a job afterwards but you know yeah so we got a whole bunch of education sorry you or training not in education employment or or training so someone yeah. who doesn't have a job isn't in school and isn't like in an apprenticeship or anything. Okay. All right. Well, we got a whole group of those people living together in a uh, old style, like what, what kind of like apartment complex or is it mm -hmm. like a boarding house? Something like that. Uh, I don't know what the specific term would be, but uh, yeah, they're, they're all living by there. one of their mothers. Yeah. And they're all, they're all kind of, I don't want to call them Nepo babies because they're not really doing anything with it, but they are kind of like just living off of their parents' uh, income uh, a little bit. And allowances. Allowances, yeah. And the mangaka. Yep. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, true. I, I keep forgetting about her because you never see her. 
Yeah, uh, you get to meet her eventually. Oh, right at the very end. Not in the yeah. show. I'll no. say that now, but yeah, not in the, the show. Very end of but the you series. do get to meet her in the manga. Is this oh, so this never finished the manga? Yeah, no. There was oh, like eleven. It's such beautiful hypocrisy. Yeah, it's like eleven <laughs> episodes. And, oh, um, yeah. Damn. Okay. How do you think I finished it so fast? Did you think I it was going to cover were a just lot? Speeding. I don't know. No, I don't have that much time on my hands. I think the anime only gets through like their very first fashion show. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah. A surprise to the people who only watched three episodes. This show is more about fashion and design. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this. It goes a couple different places because it kind of like the plot moves a little bit. You guys were saying slow burn a little bit, but like I I actually think the pacing here is a little bit more like the uh, horror Mia that we watched at the beginning of the month. And because things just, yeah, they, people are making stuff happen in this. Yeah. And, I mean, there's literally a whole group of people that the main people of the apartment are terrified of the stylish. Yeah. Which is basically anyone but them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we just say these people are all a bunch of otakus, neats, and they all do not like going outside or interacting with anyone other than their uh, immediate friend group, which I feel like anyone who's been, I feel like there's some people here who can relate to that a little bit, maybe some people who don't, but like, I feel like I've met a bunch of people in college who are exactly like this. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, coming coming from a uh, somewhat identified, I mean, if you're an anime fan, at some point you've been like this, I think. <laughs> Uh, we got our princess jellyfish who just loves jellyfish. Uh, you got a train person, someone who loves trains, uh, someone who's obsessed with bon bon. zucchini. Bon- I didn't learn all their names except for zucchini. zucchini. I know, I know, I'm saying it wrong. I know, I know it's zucchini, yeah. but you know what it sounds like. It did take me a couple minutes for me to figure out what her name actually was. Dude, I me too. Literally, what the. But my favorite magical girl genre involves everyone named like lettuce, mint, pomegranate, and That's shit. Fair. I'm not surprised that someone randomly named their kid zucchini. <laughs> so, jellyfish, trains, what's their name? Mm-hmm. Bon Bon. Another food, who'd have thought? <laughs> the War of the Three Kingdoms? My yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Old men? <laughs> GG. I was hoping, like, I was trying to be like, okay, is it something specific or is it just old dudes? I think it it's... It was more, like, historical men. Okay. It's, I For some reason, I got the feeling she was more into, like, historical as in, like, actors and posters and things. Yeah. And just, like, old-fashioned stuff. Yeah, but then as it keeps going, she's just, she's just hot for old dudes. And uh, mm-hmm. old-fashioned kimonos. Yes. Chieko. Yes. And, and then it's dolls. Well, dolls, but like, I think they also like have a bunch of kimonos for themselves in that. Yes, but she's very specifically into dolls and making old fashioned doll clothes. Okay. Quick and it's question. not even old fashioned, it's just traditional. traditional. Well, traditional, old fashioned, I think, feel like a lot of times, even if they aren't, they are kind of a synonymous to one another. I have a quick question. This is just for me. Are these the Hina dolls, like in um, Dress Up Darling? Or is it a different? I mean, I, I, I mean, I would, I would assume, but okay. Uh, I have not seen Dress of Darling. I don't know. I don't doesn't, answer that because you said the question was for yourself. But yeah, I'm just more for like I just want to know for myself. But like, no, it's not really important. The important part is that uh, on one night out, uh, our jellyfish girl uh, sees a jellyfish in the pet store window who's in a tank with another jellyfish whose mucus is going to kill it and she tries to to save the thing but can't until a a gorgeous young woman helps her buy the jellyfish and then they take it home and then she finds out nope that's a dude and then they become bestest friends (laughs) by force also um men are not welcome in her building oh yeah that's true yeah they just send a stone on impact it's no boys allowed like one of those sleepovers from when you were a kid yeah, I didn't go to those ones big, for obvious reasons. Did but, you have no girls allowed ones? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess in elementary school because it's like I don't know. There but, you go. No, all right, it's the same thing. I just wasn't allowed at the no boys allowed. Uh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, this turn to stone thing. They're so socially awkward, they literally turn to stone you anytime. Just freeze. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, I... Like what a mood. I like how this show kind of does the the whole, like, we're going to do something kind of, like, fantastical and weird. But also, people do notice it, kind of. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think it's a good balance of, like, this uh, kind of over-the-top humor. But also mixing with, yeah, there's a reality to, to this situation a little bit, yeah. which is nice. It's a very traditional um, introverts adopted by extrovert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More like the extrovert tries to move in. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. As far as plot, uh, I, I watched it all at once, so it's all mixing together. What were the first three about? So, first one was introduction. Second one was... Uh, hot Pot. Cr- yep, Hot Pot with right. Kronosuke, uh gaining the trust of uh, the ladies in the apartment building by uh, bringing in some very nice meat. Well, yeah. Um they and say then, they say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but that is far too general. I think food is the way to get to anybody. Very true. More or less. Free food especially. Free food will mm-hmm. do it. Um and then episode 3 was introduction makeover. into Kurnos- what? The makeover. It is the makeover, but I feel like a lot of it was more an introduction to Kuronosuke and uh, his family. Um, yes. Sort of the family dynamic and just sort of why Kuronosuke uh, dresses the way that he does. Outside of and just looking fabulous. Yes. <laughs> and meeting the older brother. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who is a very important character as we go. Yes. I think that's about everything. This feels like, I Pretty mean, much. at this point, the plot's not important, but what is important is the characters. The plot does become important mm-hmm. later, but I don't know how much I want to spoil for the people who haven't seen it yet or read it yet. So we might hold off for now on that. What did we feel about the characters and everybody? They're so funny. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, it they're really, really fun. is more of a comedy right now. It is, for sure. I think that's why I probably uh, binged it, and unlike how I binged the last one. <laughs> I think one thing that I did like about this, I, one, I think the show is very uh, well designed, and I like the, a lot of the character designs. Everyone feels very unique and, and their own kind of thing. But I also liked that I feel like in the last two shows, we had like this thing of people being like, oh, this person's not attractive. But then we're like looking at them like, yes, they are. Yeah. Why, yeah. like... Green hair girl in Hormia. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? But, like, I feel like they actually do kind of put in the effort to make the 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 girls at... Uh, hang on, I'm going to get the name. Ama, Mizu, Ama Mizukan, the apartment building that they live at. I feel like they kind of do try to make them, like, look... I don't want to say Unfeeling. ugly because that's the, yes, a little less, less appealing, and especially in some of the ways that they view themselves, which I think was a really uh, uh, relatable uh, element that they added. But then when the transformation happens, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, so, totally different. Yeah. yeah. It's so delightful because they do that for all of them. Like they are, okay, so Kurnosuke isn't completely above board at the beginning. Like he just yeah. views them as like a pet project. Yeah. But, like, once he gets to know them and stuff, and he's like, oh, man, no, you are all beautiful in your own ways. Yeah. And you don't have to conform to society's standards. But at the same time, here, let's conform to society's standards every now and then so that we can fight the uh, gentrification thing that's happening. Led by my family. (laughs) (laughs) Technically not led by the family. His family's a bunch of politicians who can endorse it, but they're not the ones actually doing it. So I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass on that. But yeah, possibly he's, he might be involved. (laughs) Yeah, but no, I think, I think it was really good that they were actually like, there is sort of a before and after, and there is a noticeable difference in like how they present themselves and what they're doing with that sort of thing. And I think, like, the actual effort of, like, yeah, we're not just going to draw you cute just to draw you cute, but say you're ugly anyway, I, I'm glad that they put extra effort into it. Yeah, and all the character designs really represent, like, their personalities, and they all look so distinct. There's no same face going on. Yeah. And, like, it's really fun to see, like, the difference between, like, 
um oh my god i'm so bad with their names but princess jellyfish and the zucchini and, and the bon boy bon. yeah no the boy sorry i'm just remembering food you know there's just so much contrast in like how they view themselves as like the sisterhood and like how they view the stylish and all that that it's it's very visually appealing mm-hmm um, Ian, it is actually so funny that you bring up Same Face because as the series goes on and they start, like, you meet some of Kurnosuke's friends and uh, they hire some models and stuff because, again, it gets really into fashion. Mm-hmm. It does go super Same Face with the models and everything. But I feel like maybe that's commentary. on purpose. Yeah. yeah. So just to say they kind of all look alike because they're all conforming to society and all that. Mm-hmm. I could see that actually like being an actual useful version of Same Face. Right, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that Same Face. If you're not a main character, you all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> you're the you're the background. <laughs> like in Dorora, where they're just blurred. <laughs> uh, I think they're all just gray. They're Everyone's just like gray if they're not colorless. a main character. Maybe that's oh. Because they're not part of color gangs, they're all colorless. I think I just got that. Okay, so, so maybe it actually okay. means something in Dorauron wasn't just laziness. I don't know. What's that mean? It's making me think of your line from the first episode of Madoka Magically Ale. I'm a background character in an anime and I can't move. <laughs> yes, but he had a face. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, people who haven't been talking, what do you guys think? Out the gate. Gav, Envy? Uh, I thought it was very funny. I mean, like, it's definitely comedic, and the hot pot episode made me hungry. Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah. It's one of the ones that I, like, enjoyed watching three episodes, like, back-to-back probably the most. Yay! Not to say that I didn't like the other ones. Like, the other ones are really good, too. Um, The other romance animes we've watched. Romance, quotation marks. Yes, romance. But, like, this one was just, like, a fun watch, I guess you could say. Or at least I could say a Mm -hmm. fun watch. And I really like the different characters. I think it's it's hard for me to remember all their names, too. The only ones whose names I remember are Tsukimi and Kurnosuke. Mm -hmm. Um, But I... uh, Definitely, I think the fourth episode is where they introduce Kurnosuke's friends. Because I remember meeting some of them before when I watched it, like, years ago. So, now that, like, I have been re-watching the first three episodes, it's kind of, like, coming back to me. But I definitely want to watch more of it. I would have watched more of it today if I wasn't busy earlier. But it's definitely, like, something I'm going to keep watching. And so, I have a question. Is, like, so the anime is not finished then? So, the no. anime is only 11 episodes. The anime was made in 2010. Yeah, they're. I don't think they're going to It's probably not finish finished, it, yeah. unfortunately. No, so the anime, the manga series itself went from 2008 to 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, and it got a live drama or like a live action adaptation oh, um, in 2018. Also really so, good. Yeah. I mean, the odds of the anime continuing are pretty much slim to none, but yeah. Wait, so does the live action adapt the whole thing? No. It says 10 oh. episodes, so I'm going to say no. Damn. Okay, I'm just going to read them like, on the- Maybe the movie just, adapts everything. Like, pull up a picture of the live action like they fucking nailed the characters Ah. like they look like they're cosplaying okay you remember how i said last week how uh what's the the they were like that girl's too good looking to be the creepy girl that is not the case here everybody looks spot on (laughs) Look at that shit. <laughs> yeah. that, okay, you know what? I can tell who they are just by looking at the picture. We might have to watch this because yeah. it actually seems like they, they put in some effort to make it actually be like the show. Nice. The other show. That looks really good. I'm looking at a picture of them now. Might be a thing for a later date if we do a month of just live action adaptations or something. Ooh. So. Can watch Attack on Titan live action. No, we don't have to. <laughs> 
I don't need, I don't need to watch that again. <laughs> yeah, and Envy, where are you at? I think I probably like this one the least out of, out of all seven of us. I didn't hate it. I will say, hearing your guys' thoughts on where the series goes and you know the character transformations, them coming out of their shell or whatever, I that does make me want to finish it because I, I'll be honest, after watching the first three episodes, I feel like I got like, yeah, this is fine. I can see why people like it, but just it isn't hooking me. But if it, if it deals with, you know, the characters getting more self-confidence and them, you know, stepping out of their shells, then that is something that I do like to watch in shows. So I might give it a shot then. Hmm. Yeah, that is something I'll say about the anime specifically is like it is so slow in the beginning. Really? It wasn't even the it wasn't even the pacing. It was just more of like I hate to say it, but like I understand that the not the main character, she's adorable, but the other four girls in the apartment, like I thought they were kinda usually I don't mind over the top, but for some reason their over the topness was kinda bothering me. Like, how are you guys functioning in society right now? <laughs> I think the but, thing is they're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, like, I guess that's the whole point, but I don't know. It, it, something about it was just, I don't want to say it was even, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just, something about it wasn't winning me over like everybody else was. I didn't hate it, but it was just kind of, I thought it was no. fine. Mm-hmm. I would totally agree with you. Like, if I had not, I think, read it first and knew where it was going, just based off of these three episodes, I don't know if I would have, like, continued it. Just because, like, we don't have, like, any plot yet. Yeah, I will say, as I also have read at least, like, the first two volumes of the manga, and I will say tonally, page to screen, the tone is definitely different. At least to me. Um, It reads not quite as insane, or at least quite not as over the top as uh, how the anime does it. But maybe that's just me. Hmm. I feel like I am going to have to read this manga at some point because I'm not going to get more anime. Uh, yeah, I like the manga. I want to keep reading it. It goes places. <laughs> I feel like it, it went places with the show as well. Because, like, uh, as far as, like, I mean, we talked a little bit about, like, oh, there's going to be a fashion element and some other stuff like that. Like, going from episode one to episode 11 i feel like this this like zigzags into a couple of different places as it keeps going so it did keep me on my toes for the most part as far as when the plot really starts to get going which i think we can say that the plot is is mostly them uh trying to get enough money to buy the building that they're in that way a land developer doesn't buy it tear it down and put a hotel there which i mean i can get behind that I mean, not even just that. It's kind of like if they tear down their home, like that is essentially where they're living. Like they're going to have to find somewhere else to go. Yeah. And it's going to be really hard, especially because I think a lot of the whole entire group is just so close and they're kind of like pretty dependent upon each other. Yeah. Um, That it's just kind of like that sort of thing happening to them is a devastating blow in a lot of different ways. So yeah, that is definitely like, one of the larger plot points that I think is like really cool to bring up because it shows a lot of like how they are so close to each other, despite all being so very, very different, uh, especially in their interests. Yeah. Uh, It's also like, I said coming of age for Tsukimi and Kurenosuke, but like, despite them all being, the rest of them being like in their thirties, like it is also kind of like a coming of age for them because by the end of this, like, yes, they're still awkward and they have their special interests, but, like, they have found, like, their niches in life and know how to function in society. Well, that's good. One thing that I kind of wondered about when I was watching this, because, like, to some degree, I can understand how maybe, yeah, some of their interests might not coincide with being able to make a living or going out and doing stuff. But I'm also like, okay, uh, zucchini, zucchini. I'm going to, I'm trying not to say zucchini, but it's going to slip. Uh, zucchini, why don't you want to be like a marine biologist and study jellyfish? Cause it feels like you're um, already doing that. Because as you will find out, she's very into fashion. Aha. Oh, okay. 
But I didn't think that was an interest like she until... She likes designing. I thought that wasn't an interest until she she met Kurnosuke. Kind of, but also kind of not. I okay. mean, if we think back to the very first scene in the first episode, it's about how uh, a jellyfish looks like a dress. Right. You're right. Okay. The seeds were there. Like, I don't think she realized she could combine her special interests before. And she also had, like, this notion of, like, giving in to, like, being trendy and stylish was, like, a betrayal of who she was. But it's not a betrayal if you're the one creating the style. Correct. But also, just because, like, you you don't have to, like, you know, you can be stylish but also be a nerd. Yeah. It is a thing. That's all. That's a big thing now. I mean, I, I think I remember, I've met definitely a few people who were quite nerdy, who I thought were very fashionable. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know it wasn't me. <laughs> Maybe it was. It definitely honestly, wasn't. The, the first person who comes to mind, honestly, is actually in, to oh. be quite honest. Thank uh, you. Okay, that one, I, that one I can see. But you did want to do fashion stuff, didn't you? I did when I was little. There you go. You're Princess Jellyfish. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Uh, we should also talk about uh, what's interesting is that, like, despite the show kind of being about the girls at this one place, I feel like every, almost every character in this show has, like, a special interest that they are just super into. Like, mm-hmm. not everyone, but, like, I'm thinking of, like, uh, the driver for the family. He's, like, obsessed with Mercedes. And, like, okay, he's a car guy. But he's also yep. able to, like, kind of, like, function and stuff so there's kind of like and the their uncle who's a prime minister he's just weird right yeah <laughs> uh, yeah is he a sailor moon fan he has to be okay he, he he's giving kind of like pedophile though <laughs> I, he's like he's he's very into moe it's really weird he's like just on the border i don't want to say it but like yeah <laughs> Like, yeah. I will say it because, like, mm. he was like one step away from like molesting Kurnosuke. I don't... And Kurnosuke is of age at that point, but it is implied he's been doing this for a while. I so like. Uh, Either I don't way, know. he's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, like, it, or is this just one of those like I have a. Uh, an, an, a hobby that I'm very passionate about, but also I like run the country, but his approval rating's going down to like five percent, so he might not be running the country for very long. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. It's just nice to see like that everyone has a little something. Does the brother have some kind of hidden passion? He's got a hidden something. I don't know about a passion though. <laughs> okay, He's very into <laughs> romance. Oh uh, yeah, oh, I guess that's true. Okay. I mean. One thing I will credit this show for is, um, what's the main guy's name again? I can't pronounce it. Kuranosuke. Kuranosuke. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's happened in other anime that I just haven't seen, but like, this is the first time I've seen an anime where a character cross dresses and it's not treated as a joke. Like it's treated, you know, as this is something that this character likes to do. And, you know, the other girl She's, you know, a little weirded out at the beginning, but then at a, at a certain point, she's like, yeah, this is just how he is. So I'm just, I just don't want to, I, I just don't want to hurt. I just don't want my roommates to see a man mm. <laughs> put on your wig. Hurry. Yeah, I think that was more because her boner was confused. She was like, oh man, that's like the prettiest lady I ever saw. She's like the princess of all princesses. Oh, fuck, it's a dude. <laughs> yeah, I think that might just be like, a, maybe it's just a difference in the genre, because I feel like if this were maybe like a seinen, it would probably be treated very, very differently. I will say like this was a kind of huge step for Japan culturally, mm-hmm. because like cross-dressing was very frowned upon, because like there is still a lot of issues with like, not just homophobia, but, like, homophobia is the one we hear about the most over there. I mean, hell, there's still an issue with cross-dressing and homophobia here in this country, so. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. But, like, I'm sure some of us have seen this, but, like, 
uh, there was a lingerie company in Japan, like around the same time where like for Valentine's Day, they asked everyone, hey, what is something you want to see from us product wise? And almost all of the responses were they wanted lingerie in men's sizes. And they were like, hmm, okay, weird, but they did it anyways. And their sales went up astronomically. I mean, Aww. I follow the money, man. <laughs> yeah, I was going to really say, I'm like, was. Japan's definitely very, very capitalist to be, <laughs> to be quite frank, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, no, but like, it was a shift in like the cultural to like, oh, I personally think it's weird, but if that's what gets you off or like, that's what makes you happy. Yeah, I think that is good. Um, I'm trying to think of like, well, we kind of were, were just thinking about this because the other day, uh, the one other one that we were thinking of was, uh, I never get the oh, name right. Oh my you God. You know what it is. Tenkatsu Ramen. What yeah. was the full name? Ha- I have no idea. Hataka, Hataka. Wait, stop for one second. Go. No, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Al, when you're editing, uh, can you leave that pause? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hata- Hakata Tonkatsu <laughs> Ramen. There we go. Which is a show so in the style. Ramen? Well, yeah. It, it's a show in the style kind of of Dorara. Uh, it's about a bunch of assassins, and one of them is a uh, cross dresser who uh, murders people with a gun knife. Yeah, oh. they're really cool. Uh, nice. Yeah, only nice. got one season, and it should have had more. It was so good, man. I need to read the light. Well, on. you know, it's funny you mentioned Dorara, the same studio that animated this show, also animated Dorara, too. You know what? I can see it a little bit. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. So, speaking of production stuff, how did everybody feel about the main character being uh, Alphonse from uh, Full Metal Alchemist? Who watched the, the dub? the voice acting. What? Uh, so, I watched it subbed. Okay. You guys missed yeah. out. Uh, I don't honestly feel like I did. Yeah, the, I the voice the actress for. The main character in the sub is one of the most famous voice actresses in Japan, so. Oh, Kanahanazawa? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So maybe we missed out, actually. Maybe we missed out. I don't know. I had a lot of fun just waiting for her to say, Big Brother! (laughs) (laughs) I liked the dub. Yeah. I like Pretty good. Had some good people in it. I think the sub does a better job with differentiating Kurnosuke's voices, but that's about it. Mm. Okay. I might have to check it out at some point. Yeah, me too. Maybe not immediately, because I don't want to just immediately rewatch this entire show. <laughs> Gotta, I'm going to let it sit and ruminate, let it marinate for a little bit first. Mm-hmm. That's, let it simmer. That's fair. Um, so, uh, none of you guys like make your cosplays from scratch, really. I so do. So you might not relate to this, mm-hmm. but... um. When they're preparing for the fashion show, there's an element of them being on a time crunch and being like, shit, we don't know how to like sew this. Where they start like gluing and stapling stuff. I'm like, oh my God, what a mood. I mean, I don't have firsthand experience. I don't have personal experience, but I certainly have firsthand experience from certain people in this chat group that <laughs> made their cosplays at the last minute. I've college. done that. I, I I don't know why you're discluding me in this conversation. Yeah, you're pretty I good. never knew you did that. I thought you I made it the time. I forgot you like spray painted something like I spray painted yeah, you've so sewn things. Glued, yeah. I made an entire no. like armored chest plate. Uh, yeah, but it was something you shouldn't have spray painted. I feel like you had issues because you did it. Okay, yes, it was like a, a black mesh fabric kind of thing that I end up like, well, I can't dye that. It's black. So, yeah. you um, know, it, I ended up making some pants that were very stiff. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants yeah. to know, I, I made like a, a Dark Knight armored version of Mysterion from South Park. So. I was wondering if that was the one you were It was pretty to. badass costume, though, I will say. Yeah, I it thought it was cool. pretty cool. It probably still doesn't fit me because I've gained some weight, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was just East painted fabric. Yeah, like, how else was I going to make the, the, the black <laughs> stuff that I got the thing out of It'd pink? Be fabric spray paint. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't take... And it's oh, all really? so small. Yeah, it was like pure black. What was I going to do? 
You like, did your best. At least you like, didn't like uh, acrylic I did a, paint it. I did a damn good job, in best. my opinion. <laughs> Gotta. If I had the time, I would do something like that again. Just never have the time anymore. <laughs> but also lack of inspiration. I don't know what inspired me to do that, but it did. You're a motivated man. Yeah. Yeah. Long nights of just doing that. So I'm I'm right there. I, I don't do it often, but I have those moments of like, hey, the hyper focus brain is hitting and I'm going to be up for the next 12 hours just making this one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I get that way with like when I when I have a really dumb idea that I'm like, I need to include this as like a three second joke in one of our let's play <laughs> things. I'll be up for four hours working on whatever. I don't know if anyone noticed Nigel Thornberry in the last Ace Attorney <laughs> thing that we did. But you guys remember those uh, Think Maya Think thumbnails? Yes. Yeah. Came up with, I, I thought of that at like 1 a.m. and just, mm -hmm. uh, nope, I'm not going to sleep until I make that happen. <laughs> so I had to make that from scratch, which is always fun. So yeah, no, I'm... We I'm, appreciate it. I definitely mm -hmm. identify with a lot of these characters in here with like, yeah, no, no one else gets it but you, but I, I feel you. I feel you when you get in that, uh, I'm going to do this mood. I'm just like, oh man, because it's just such a level of like, in the community, it's called crap play. <laughs> crap play? Because you're just putting out crap. Like yeah, no, that's, is, it's that's how finished, I would describe our stuff. But it's shit. <laughs> I, I've heard the... Look good in photos and you probably cannot wear it again. <laughs> I'm going to throw this out there. There's a there's a phrase that I need to maybe take to heart a little more than I do. Uh, done is better than perfect. Me too. Yes. Yeah. So. Sometimes. Wait, wait, say that again. Finished is, is better, better. Finished is better than perfection. Because guess like, what? You can you can try to make something perfect, but if it's never done, guess what? No one's ever going to see it. I mean, isn't that the oxymoron, yeah. though, that nothing's perfect? I think they glued people into the dresses. Which, again, is something people do. Yeah. It'll last for a little there. while. I don't think I've ever had, like, a any issue where, where, where a costume I was wearing was falling apart, necessarily. But Oh, I did have that thing with Monkey where I couldn't zip it up and keep the tail in there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who wants to know, that. we we did a, a group thing as as the Tokyo Mew Mew, and I was monkey. And to be fair, I'm the biggest person in this group, <laughs> tallest. So that was a fun juxtaposition. And it was definitely a costume made for women. Yeah, but I had it in like the triple XL for women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so, still, like and I women's still sizing can barely, is I can much still different. Barely fit into it. <laughs> oh, I we shaved. Have not glued ourselves into cosplay before. <laughs> oh, I did. I wasn't gluing myself into something. It was more I refused to take it off as I was gluing something back onto it mm. at Sangawa, and I like got this massive burn on my tit, Fuck. and it was really awkward the rest of the con. Damn. Wow. Well, Ow. it's like we've all been there and and everything sucks sometimes. But hey, sometimes you get it done and it looks cool for a long enough that you're like, hey, yeah, this was worth it. It's always hard. It's it's always like the at the end of the, where you like you put in so much stuff. But at the end of the day, if you can say, yeah, that was worth it. Hey, it's all good. So I got some photos. Some people were like, oh, you look so good. That's enough. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I actually, when I did the Mysterion, I ran into someone who was dressed as Kenny, who was hanging out with someone dressed as Princess Kenny, and I got pictures with them. That's fantastic. So, you were there. Wow. You never know. I probably was yeah. there, but that was years ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago. I gotta, I gotta yeah. do mm -hmm. that again, and I gotta get a Princess <laughs> Kenny. I gotta be that person who can do both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, trying to think, what else, what else should we talk about with the show? I feel like we Did covered we a lot. Covered the characters, covered the basic plot and, and some of that stuff. We didn't go into too much spoilers for most of the stuff past episode three. A few little hints here and there, but, you know, I think if anyone wants to continue watching this, it'll, it'll still be a fun surprise, I think. We might as well. I'm a yay here. I watched the whole thing, and I'm probably going to try to look up some of the manga to see where else the rest of this goes. So, Yeah. Me too. I'm a yay. I definitely want to continue reading the manga. 
Um, I want to get my hands on the volumes because I think I was reading it online last time and that's why I kind of fell off. So mm. at some point, I just want to get the volumes and just read the whole thing. I'm definitely a yay. I want to finish the anime and then read the manga as well. Uh, I am also a yay. Um, I, I'm really bad at actually like continuing animes because I don't actually really like sitting down to watch things um but i will happily read the manga i actually just ordered volume two from barnes and noble so Mm. that's coming in the mail (laughs) like going back to like it feels slower paced in the anime like especially if you're a fast reader the manga just feels quicker yeah Uh, yeah i mean i i want to say i got through the uh the omnibus which is like volumes one and two um i think i got through it in about uh, two or three days so for me i will say that's probably about maybe a volume maybe a little less in a day so yeah i want to continue it the barnes and noble just never has it in stock mm. so it's coming in the mail i'm a late yay like i said i didn't hate it maybe i'll continue watching it knowing that it gets a little more up my alley but yeah it's it was cute and i can understand why it has a following to it i'm a yay i really enjoyed this I, i'm interested in seeing more of the fashion stuff and i, I kind of like that the romance was a more of a b plot i'm surprised she was into the older brother i thought it was gonna be between her and what's his face Kuranosuke. Mm. yeah keep watching kuranosuke no basket was this before <laughs> basketball career before <laughs> 2010, when was Kuroko? <laughs> um, I want to say Kuroko came out like, what, 2013? Something like that. Yeah, so I think this is before. So he gives up cross-dressing to play basketball. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> something like that. Okay. Um, it was really cute, though. If And it... The whole point of it is seems to be something that I firmly believe in, which is Everybody is at least a little bit of a freak about something. Mm-hmm. Just some things are more socially acceptable. Like cars. Like cars. It's kind of like how fashion. Like, uh, merfolk and furries are basically the same thing. We're siblings, but <laughs> merfolk just have uh, a complex because we're more socially acceptable <laughs> and we're just better. <laughs> wow. That's fine. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Damn. I'm also a yay. I would definitely rewatch all the way through. But more importantly, I do want to force Cece to read the manga all the way through because, like, I did spoil this for her. And every time I talked, like, how did you phrase it? Every time you had a comma in the sentence? Yeah, I thought <laughs> every time there was a comma in that sentence, I thought it was going in a different direction than it was. <laughs> it was like, oh, and this happened. I'm like, oh, okay, and then it would be like, she's like, and then no, it goes in a completely opposite direction. Oh, okay. But then it follows that, and she's like, no, and then it turns again. <laughs> I mean, if you want something like that, I, I'd definitely recommend, hey, go watch the rest of uh, Samurai Flamenco, but... It was really just fucking hilarious watching her reaction to, like, everything I was saying. <laughs> All right. That, that wraps that up. We got one more thing coming up for the month, and uh, I think what have I kept saying this entire time? Next week determines whether or not I get to keep recommending things. Yes. So, next... And it's your channel! Yeah, so... <laughs> This is going to be interesting. Uh, next week is Nyaroko, Crawling with Love, a harem show based on Cthulhu. So, we've already finished Sucker for Love. Uh, we'll see what the anime adaptation is. It's not an actual anime adaptation of it. Bell, have you watched this before? I have watched the entire thing. Okay. So, don't judge me this week. Judge me next week. <laughs> we'll see you guys then. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!